Welcome, welcome. You're coming with me. Oh, you're good. I'm coming in the house right now. Welcome, welcome to the haunted, haunted house. That button. Did you push that button? I see the button. It's right uh, inside that first door. Inside that first door. I'm looking for a button and I don't see a button. There is no button. I'm gonna continue. It's a button. There's no button. No one's gonna find it's it. A button! Why is this door open? That's how uh, you no, open that other door. Okay. The door. I close the third door. Yeah. I just ran through it. Global response to this change. In a time of war, obviously, the focus is on hiding in bombs. The reason why it doesn't work, the all these doors don't so work for you, is because you keep opening them with the locks. They're not meant to be open with the locks. Why open them when I can't find the buttons? I guess from what you said the before, you feel to like They're this really is not. also a part of the human damage. And all those... It is absolutely I think part the only one damage. Didn't shut off one way head. to look at it is that the environmental consequences of war... Are oh, the NPR laser is so far along. War ...that can continue long after the shells have stopped exploding. No, I passed it like a long ago. I didn't know And the guns have pretty seized. sure... It, okay. And so when we I'll talk about the environmental consequences of war, what we're really talking about is simply the impacts of war on humans and on the places where they live in another more protracted and often more insidious form. Carol Muffin is president and CEO of the Center for International Environmental Law. Thanks so much for speaking with us. Just want a bunch Thank you. Of This guy's with the movie.